how to do peer-to-peer on-chain encrypted messaging with Paymail. Uh, and I want to talk about some of the protocols that we have working right now and sort of what remains to be uh, done, as well as uh, 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 an example uh, application that does this, which is called Baymail. Um, so first of all, some, some background. So I've been talking about Paymail, and one of the things that we built into Paymail uh, since day one was something we called the identity key. And the identity key is just a way of attaching a public key to an email address. And if you know anything about the history of things like, like basically PGP and related technologies, um, the fact that we've attached a public key to an email address should be regarded as a giant like, like deal uh, that we're going to be able to solve uh, you know, everything related to identity and naming as I've been describing in previous videos. Um, so basically what this enables is uh, the fact that I can use my email address, which is a paymail, but let's just, I'll just use the word paymail right now just because we haven't yet actually merged email and paymail. Maybe I can talk about that in a future video, what that actually looks like, but they are completely consistent. But let's suppose I've got my paymail and there's another person with a different paymail. So I'll use Lorian as an example again. Um, so if I want to send uh, an, an encrypted message to Lorian, for example, um, the way this can work is um, I have my paymail. I can send a message to Lorian, which means I, I query his public key. I use Diffie-Hellman between my public key and his pub public key to have a shared secret, use AES to encrypt a message. What I'm describing is basically something called ECIES. Uh, uh, ECIES stands for Elliptic Curve Integrated Encryption Scheme. It's a way of uh, encrypting data to a uh, elliptic curve public key, just like Bitcoin. So it's a way of using the keys in Bitcoin to encrypt data to someone's public key so that only they can read it. And so, uh, we can do this now with Paymail. We can also do things like signatures, of course, where I can sign the message that I'm sending to Lorian, and so Lorian can know that I am the person sending it. Um, so what this means is we can do uh, on-chain encrypted messaging. I can create an encrypted message for Lorian and put it on-chain. So we're getting actually very close to having all the stuff working. We have we have many of the technologies working already. Um, so the stuff we have working are, so in Paymail we have the identity public keys already there. So we have the ability to actually leverage that key for any purpose whatsoever. Uh, an important missing piece is the actual delivery of peer-to-peer -peer transactions. We don't have that working live yet. We do have uh, sort of MVPs of this stuff like internally inside Money Button, and we're work working with other wallets who have sort of the same thing going on, uh, where what we're doing is to make it possible to do peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, transactions. So that when I uh, you know, send a message to Lorian as an example, uh, the, the transaction itself will actually go directly to Lorian. Uh, you know, to his, or to, at least to his paymail host, although it, it could be directly to him himself, but will most likely be someone acting on his behalf. But the reason why it works this way is basically that's how they know the message that I'm giving to them, and then they know what they, what it is that they need to decrypt. Um, okay, so anyway, we have this identity key built into uh, paymail since day one. This is why it's there. It, it, it allows us to do things related to identity. It allows us to sign messages and encrypt messages using this key. Um, and uh, we can also do things like fancy things. We're not doing this stuff yet, but we can do things like we can derive new keys with this key. So we can do, we can do things like uh, you know use hierarchical keys and things like this. We can generate new shared secrets. We can add that shared secret to the public key, and generate new keys and things like this. So we can we can avoid key reuse uh, using this key as well. Uh, you don't need more than one key to do things like this. You can have deterministic keys and have as many keys as you want to uh, based on one single uh, primary uh, identity key. And as I described in a previous video, these things are designed to be uh, uh, semi-stable. Uh, the users and keys are not the same thing. Uh, the public key can change. It doesn't matter. We can solve all these problems and uh, you know it, it will work. Um, okay, so, so in a nutshell, here's how this works with peer-to-peer on-chain messaging. So we actually have a lot of this stuff working right now. I mean, we, we've implemented more of this inside Money Button than any other wallet, but the idea is this is not a Money Button thing. This is an everybody thing. Any Bitcoin wallet can implement these technologies, and we can have genuine wallet-to-wallet, peer-to-peer encrypted messaging using, a, using standardized protocols that anyone can adopt and use. Um, okay, so using uh, the following technologies, we need the ability to, first of all, have names so that you know who you're sending a message to. You need the identity public key so that you have a way to get a public key, which you then use for things like actually encrypting the message. And then that's how you encrypt a message to that person. Uh, we use Electrum ECIS because uh, the, the ECIS standard built into a, a Electrum uh, was both seemed to be a very good one, a very thoughtfully designed ECIS protocol, uh, as well as uh, something that uh, uh, was implemented in more than one uh, you know library. So it's implemented inside Electrum as well as inside BSV, our JavaScript library. So it was like the only one that had multiple implementations already. Um, so those are the reasons why we're using Electrum ECIS. Um, we can support others in the future, but I think it's a very good one that, that everyone is not going to have an issue uh, implementing uh, inside their wallets uh, right away if they want to do things like this, and I'm sure they will. Um, 
And for signatures, you're using something called Bitcoin signed message. So if you go back to the Bitcoin core protocol from several years ago, I think it goes back to probably at least as far back as 2013 or something like this. Um, we have uh, a way to sign arbitrary data using the same keys that, that are used inside your Bitcoin wallet. So you can. So the idea is that we, we, we don't want to ever accidentally send money somewhere when we're signing arbitrary data. When you're signing data, no one should be able to fool you into accidentally signing a transaction. So the idea of the Bitcoin signed message protocol is basically you prefix the data with the words Bitcoin signed message, which would never actually exist inside of a Bitcoin transaction, and then you hash this. And then that's the thing that you sign, and so therefore you can never, like, the user doesn't have to care about any of these things, but as far as the software goes, you would never accidentally uh, sign a Bitcoin transaction using this, this signature uh, algorithm. Um, okay, so using these technologies, we, we got all the pieces fit together, and then the only missing pieces I'm trying to say is like the peer-to-peer -peer transaction stuff, which is very close. Once we have these things, then we've got all the basic foundational elements for peer-to-peer on-chain messaging wallet-to-wallet uh, inside, uh, uh, you know, every single Bitcoin wallet. So this is a, a centerpiece of this user owns their data philosophy because, of course, if you're going to do anything like collaborate on a legal contract with other people, you're probably going to want to message with them and you're probably going to want those messages to be encrypted and authentic and stuff like this. Uh, and that's exactly what we can do. Um, so you send, it, you, you send the message itself encrypted peer to peer. Uh, to the to the recipient, but then it also goes on chain. So you've got a there's your data storage too is on chain, and no one can read it because it's encrypted. And all these people worried about whether someone's going to crack your encryption is uh, not realistically going to happen uh, with uh, you know in, you know with, you know anytime soon. Um, so it is not really an issue. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, there you go. You've got all the basic elements. Okay, so I think that's enough of a, a bit of a background. And what I want to show next is I want to show an actual working uh, uh, example um, of peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, encrypted messaging. So there's this wonderful application called Baymail, and Baymail uh, actually existed before we implemented the new crypto operations API inside Money Button. Um, so uh, Degen, uh, Degen is the name of the guy that is creating this thing, and he already had the idea for this and was able to use Money Button uh, with our sort of earlier APIs uh, to give like an MVP of this. He immediately uh, uh, added support for uh, encryption uh, when we added that into uh, the, our crypto operations API. So you can now do encrypted messaging. And so what I'm going to do here for the first time, actually, I haven't tried this yet, so let's hope that this actually works. I'm going to actually demo uh, this. So I've got two browsers open here, and I've got one is my personal account and one is the money button uh, sort of primary account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually log into Baymail with my uh, 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 I'm actually logging in as the primary money button user here. Uh, so Baymail will receive permission to read your user ID and name and read your public profile information, including primary Paymail, user ID, avatar, and name. Okay, it sounds good to me. All right, continue as money button. I am, I am logging in as money button itself. I am money button right now. Look, it even has my avatar there. That's pretty cool. So now what I want to do is I'm going to send, let's suppose I'm, okay, now I'm in the other window here. I'm logged in as myself, Ryan. And I'm going to send a, I'm going to send a message here. Let's see. How does this work? So I'm going to say, oh no, I got to go up here. So I'm going to send a message to money button at moneybutton.com. And I'm going to send my message. Hello, uh, money button. Um, I am the CEO, uh, get working. <laughs> no, here, uh, you know, add more features and stuff. Uh, you need more features. You need more features. Uh, and and you should go faster. But otherwise, you're doing a good job. Okay, now I'm going to send this message to Money Button. I can also send money with this, which is quite interesting when you think about the implications of that. I, we can talk about that in future videos. But I, I would send ten cents to Money Button here. Okay, so I'm going to send a private encrypted message here. Look. Your Bay mail it will be encrypted using BEI1, right? That's Electrum ECIS, and burnt to chain. A SHA-256 hash will also be burnt to chain, so the recipient can check the signature of the sender and so that you can prove the message existed. Okay, sounds amazing. Okay, so I'm going to send an encrypted uh, and signed message on chain to the main money button account from my personal account. Okay, send private message. I guess it's encrypting it and stuff like this right now. It's taking kind of long. Okay, so that was longer than I was hoping. I, I don't know why that's kind of slow there. Okay, so, all right, so I sent it. So now I should be able to go back here. So I'm now logged in as money button here, and I should be able to see my message. So let me go to my inbox. Ryan X Charles a few seconds ago. So it knows that's public. 
this will decrypt your bay mail locally without closing anything. So the way we have this working right now is you do have to actually swipe to decrypt it. So when, in order to decrypt the message, right here, I've received it, but I can't see it. I do know that it's from, you know, myself because that part is actually on chain and is not encrypted. So you can see it, the way that th this particular system is designed is that the sort of the identities are actually not encrypted, but the, uh, it, there are ways to fix this, and I don't know what Degen's plan is exactly, but you can actually make it so that the identities are actually uh, private as well. But he's probably just doing it this way. I mean, you know, look, you gotta, you gotta get, get it going, and it, there are use cases for the uh, uh, sort of unencrypted names and stuff like this. It's probably the only way to get it working right now, given the way that the technology works and the limitations of it uh, right now. Uh, but we can fix all that stuff. Okay, so anyway, uh, encrypted Baymail. Looks like I actually see a bug with money button right there. I think it's supposed to say decrypt, and for some reason the button is too short. Um, I'll try to remember this. And uh, here, can I take a? I don't want to. I don't want to risk breaking it and create an issue right now in the middle of making a video. But in any case, there seems to be a bug with money button. Okay, but in any case, I'm gonna now swipe to actually decrypt the message. Okay, well, hello, money button. I'm the CEO. You need more features and should be faster. But otherwise, you're doing a good job. Okay, well, I guess thank you, Ryan. All right, so I guess that's all I want to show. I mean, that's an example of peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, encrypted messaging inside Baymail. So let me explain a bit about what the vision for this would be. So again, I, I don't want to speak for Degen. I mean, I didn't ask him or anything before I made this video. I'm just showing it as a, as a uh, wonderful money button app uh, that is a really cool uh, you know, demonstration of, of what we were hoping someone would build and someone uh, built all this stuff. And uh, as we roll out more features, uh, we can make this more powerful. So. Uh, presumably what Degen's plan is to do things like, you know, it should be possible to actually send to other wallets and stuff like this. So for that, we need actually the collaboration of other wallets, which is part of why I'm making this video so that people understand what it is that we've done and what we're doing right now. Uh, we have like the basics for peer-to-peer on-chain encrypted messaging. And the only technical piece that actually isn't in place right now is the actual peer-to-peer -peer messaging. And again, you know, basically if you're a wallet and you're not already in, already in touch with me about this, uh, and you do want to collaborate on the peer-to-peer -peer transaction stuff, please get in touch with me and we are building this stuff right now. We've got working code and everything, we just haven't launched it yet. Um, so we are going to deliver on the peer-to-peer -peer transaction stuff. Right now, the, peer the way the messaging works inside Baymail is that it is on-chain, it is encrypted, it is signed, but uh, it is not actually delivered peer-to-peer -peer yet. So you basically have to log in to Baymail to actually see it. The way it will work in the future is you're just going to use your wallet and it will go to your wallet and all you have to do is open your wallet and your messages are going to be there. Um, so that's how it will work in the future. But you can see that we've got a wonderful prototypes and proof of concept of this uh, going right now. Um, okay, so I think that's all I have to say. And I guess I'll just give one sort of final shout out to Baymail. The URL is B-A-E-M-A-I-L dot me. And Degen, amazing work creating this application. This is something that, uh, you know, we, we just... You know, part of the reason why we built Money, I mean, I shouldn't say part of the reason, the entire reason why we built Money Button is we know we can't make the apps. So we're like, okay, well, let's just focus on what we're good at, which is the button, and make sure that it's possible to make apps. And Degen has made a remarkable, innovative app that just couldn't make me happier that this, that this exists, and he did it incredibly quickly. Um, it was like, as soon as we had the crypto operations working, he had the app working. So this is what a wonderful collaboration that we can just build features and he can build an app and the two things work together. It's perfect. So, all right. So great job, Degan. This is amazing. Um, so anyway, I hope everyone uh, understood everything that I'm saying in this video and you, you get what we're trying to say here is we've got signatures and encryptions working on chain. This is what the crypto operations API is about. These things are not about being proprietary money button APIs. It's about creating generic protocols that can be adopted by any wallet. Uh, and so that we can get peer to peer encrypted messaging going and this is a centerpiece of, of a user own your data paradigm for, for the internet, which is going to change everything. So we do need peer-to-peer -peer encrypted messaging and we've, we've got it going. We're very close to having this stuff working. We need you know the wallets to add support for this stuff, which is gonna be very easy because I know many of the JavaScript wallets are using our library, which already has the signatures and encryption algorithms in there. It's really just a matter of sort of getting it going inside your wallets uh, insofar as you care about peer-to-peer -peer encrypted messaging. Uh, and we can have this have this working. Uh, there, of course, there are more sophisticated we ways we can do peer-to-peer -peer encrypted messaging. I can't remember if I said this in the video earlier, but I mean, we can do video. We can do thing, uh, more sophisticated algorithms like text secure and stuff like this. But let's do this one step at a time and do everything iteratively. Uh, and uh, you know, we can iterate protocols the same way that we iterate our own application. So if we iterate the entire ecosystem together, uh, you know, that's going to be a better way to get things done rather than to tr try to do things monolithically. And that's exactly what we're doing is actually iterating the protocols. And I think that's a benefit of uh, uh, extensible protocols. Okay, I think I've said enough for this video. So thank you very much for listening. And congratulations, Degan, on making a, a wonderful app. Um, this is just, it makes me so happy to see things like this. All right, so thank you very much.